Well, hello there, my name is Arkanova Penguin, and I am an impatient little guy with an impatient uncle and an impatient penguin. So I come with a natural hatred for video game franchises that take more than a year or so for the next game in that franchise to come out. So today we're going to be taking a look at some annual video game franchises, or rather franchises that release video games every single year in that franchise. And we're going to be seeing if that release schedule impacts the quality of the games that they are releasing in that franchise. I made that needlessly complicated, but I'm keeping it. Now keep in mind, if I criticize one of these franchises, I'm not saying it's a bad franchise. Okay, I kind of am, but... Okay, most of the time it's a bad franchise, but that doesn't mean that all annual video game franchises are bad, just most of them. Money is pretty cool stuff. I mean, am I wrong here? Uh, it's easily in my top 10 favorite currencies, uh, closely behind shekels and buttons. And in fact, this is not a controversial opinion. Studies have shown that approximately 56.98667% of all people like money. 56.98666% of those people being entertainment companies. Disney, Apple, Disney, Microsoft, Disney, Nintendo, Disney, Marvel, which is a part of Disney. Now, in my opinion, too many people get mad at companies for caring about money because that means that they don't care about the customers. And while in some cases, unfortunately, this can be true, money is a necessity in this world. Without it, you're not gonna do very well, and while it's a harsh reality, it's still reality. But some companies go... overboard to say the least. Like I said before, money is a necessity in both this world and in the entertainment industry. And companies need money to actually stay alive and not go out of business. Uh, and as a current consumer, I can safely say that I like it when companies push out stuff in franchises that I like. However, when companies release films or games or even books that often, uh, occasionally quality is sacrificed. And obviously, as we all know, whenever a company releases one bad film or game, that company's done so. At least that's what all these ignorant, I mean extremely wise videos told me. Let's start with Poker Boy Man. I don't know if you knew this, but I'm a little bit of a Pokemon fan. So obviously my opinion on Pokemon is gonna be very high. Is it mainly because of nostalgia? Probably. However, this is my video, and so therefore, this video is about my opinions, and in my opinion, Pokemon is one of the most consistently great video game franchises regardless of nostalgia. I know many people, more now than ever, have the opinion that Pokemon is not that good, but if you were to give me pretty much any mainline game in that franchise, I would pretty much be set for life. Now, is every game in this franchise great? No. Uh, Sword and Shield were good, but they had quite a few flaws. Uh, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum were mega slow. Ultra Sun and Mood had more cutscenes than most movies have actual scenes. Uh, hey, you Pikachu exists. But I still think that at the very least, every game in the franchise is of quality. Like, you can find some enjoyment in playing each game. The main problem people have with Pokemon is the unevolved battle formula, which has remained the same since the first games, Pokemon Red, Blue, and Green. And... I have to admit, while I do enjoy turn-based combat, the only things Pokemon did to change the formula being Mega, Z-Moves, Dynamax, and Gigantamax didn't actually change the formula. It just made it more interesting and, in my opinion, still better than it was before. However, I am very excited to see if Legends Arceus will do anything else to change up the combat. They've already showed that whole, like, agile, strong style thing for Legends Arceus. Uh, and I mean, it looks really cool. The whole idea that faster Pokemon have, can have multiple turns to me is just super cool. Um, and to be honest, even if that's all they do, I'm happy with it because, you know, at least it's something to change the formula a little bit. Next up, let's check out one of the most overrated yet simultaneously underrated franchises of all time. Um, how we've reached that point, I don't know how, but... Uh, I'm talking about Call of Duty. It's so weird how many people genuinely despise Call of Duty because of how 
popular and overrated it is, which at least in my opinion has kind of turned Call of Duty into a little bit of an underrated franchise, if you think about it. I'm not even a big fan of the Call of Duty franchise, I just get really annoyed when people hate game franchises for such petty reasons. I mean, it's the exact same thing with games like uh, like Fortnite and, uh, and Minecraft, uh, uh, Skyrim, uh, Overwatch, Apex Legends, um, and stuff like that. I mean, it's the exact same thing. People look at these franchises, see that a bunch of people like them, and they're like, oh, I don't like it because it's a shooting game, and I only, I only like indie games like The Legend of Zelda and Mario. I don't, it, to me, it's just, it's just stupid. I don't, I'm not, I don't, like, there's not even a good way to sugarcoat it. It's just stupid. It's just dumb. So many people hate these games because they're popular and overrated, when... In my opinion, it's now even more popular and overrated to say that those games are popular and overrated. Do you see the circular argument here? Oh my god! Well, I have made severe laps in my judgment. I would like to apologize for my incredibly immature behavior. And I have been informed by the FBI that if I disagree with anybody on the internet and publicly speak about it on the internet again, I will be officially cancelled on Twitter. Which is kind of ironic considering I wrote, directed, and starred in a little sketch comedy video making fun of cancel stuff. So, uh, back to the, back to the thing. Regardless of your opinion of the franchise, you have to admit that Call of Duty is THE annual game franchise. Even though Pokemon and Mario, which we will be talking about in a bit, are far more iconic. Call of Duty is the first franchise most people think of when they hear yearly video game franchise. And overall, I do think that the games are fun. Some of them definitely more than others. My favorites are definitely uh, the first three Black Ops titles. All of them have super robust multiplayers, my favorite standard game mode and gun game, and my favorite mode in general, Zombies. The hours I have spent in both gun game and Zombies is uncountable. Okay, it's actually not that much at all, like maybe 5 hours in each gun game and like 10 in, 10 in each zombies, but they're still awesome, okay? <laughs> I just had the weirdest dream that I was about to talk about Assassin's Creed. Before you flock to the comments and say that there were three two-year gaps in between games, I am still counting Assassin's Creed as a yearly video game franchise. My opinions on Assassin's Creed are somewhat controversial, I guess? I mean, at least controversial if you love the franchise. I am of the opinion that Assassin's Creed is okay. It's not bad. It's not amazing. It is just... fine. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is, like, one of my all-time favorite games. The Ezio Trilogy is one of the most consistently solid video game trilogies probably ever with some really great storytelling and characters. Uh, Origins is just a really good and fun game. The first game was... It was alright. I mean, it was still pretty cool, though. But then you realize that there are, like, 75,000 more games in the franchise, and all of the other ones range from, eh, it's alright, to, oh, wow, this is not good at all. <laughs> And in my opinion, the reason for this wavelength and quality is because of the super strict deadlines. They constantly set themselves. If they actually took more than less a year gap between games, then not only would people be more accepting of this franchise and not as many people would be burnt out on this franchise, the actual games in the franchise might become better. In my opinion, the main problem with this franchise, other than its super strict deadlines, is the quantity over quality problem. The two most recent games in the franchise, being Odyssey and Valhalla, especially fall short because of this. Don't get me wrong, both of these games have redeeming qualities, which I will talk about when I cover the Assassin's Creed games. However, both games suffer from overly large open worlds with a lot of substance. But most of that substance is painfully basic and boring because of just how much world they put in there. In fact, a lot of it ended up being copy and pasted. 
Games like Assassin's Creed 2 worked because it understood its limits, and games like Black Flag and Origins worked because they had already been in development for a while. Moving on from that, let's discuss the EA Sports titles. Now, please keep in mind, I do not like sports games, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. It is not an unpopular opinion that the EA Sports games are just the exact same thing every year with almost nothing but updated rosters and improved graphics. However, however, as somebody who really dislikes sports games, I actually completely agree. I know these games have fans. In fact, I knew one, and he absolutely loved the 2K games specifically. And there is nothing wrong with that. If someone enjoys a game that I don't, then that's a good thing. I'm not gonna be like those snowflakes I was talking about earlier and say that someone is wrong for liking a popular game. I'm just going to respectfully disagree. There is a difference, and people need to understand that. I feel like my opinion on all of these games has pretty much already been stated. They're all not my types of games at all. They're pretty much just the same thing every year. Part of that is probably because of the deadlines they set themselves, but I feel like it's also a little bit because of how lazy they are. I don't know. I'm not EA. The final video game franchise we're going to talk about today is arguably the most popular video game franchise of all time, and it's one that millions of people still love and adore to this day. I'm, of course, talking about Disney Infinity. Truly a masterpiece series. Yeah! Mario series contains some of my all-time favorite games. World, RPG, 64, Paper Mario, Sunshine, The Galaxy Games, Mario Kart 8, uh, Odyssey. All of these are some of my very favorite games. But it also contains some not bad, but very basic and boring games. You got Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, uh, the entire new Super Series, uh, Mario Kart 7, the newer Mario RPGs. And then there are the straight-up bad games in the series. Now, something that I've noticed with this franchise is that the gaps between my favorite games in the franchise are much bigger than compared to other annual franchises. Plus, they have multiple teams working on multiple different projects at the same time. So while Mario is far from perfect, I would argue that it is the most consistently good game franchise. Even the worst games have some fun aspects to them. So overall, even though it's basic and predictable, I do think that Mario is the best annual game franchise. Just think of it like this. If you could only play one random game from a franchise that you can pick yourself, what franchise would you pick? Me personally, I would 100% choose Mario because I know that there is at least going to be some level of quality no matter what I get. Speaking of Mario, that's actually going to be my next video. Well, my next video after my annual series where I catalog my top 10 favorite games that I played this year. It's a video that's going to be on the original Super Mario Brothers game. Um, and it's going to start a little series where I'm going to go over every single mainline Mario game. And that's obviously not going to be the only video. Those aren't going to be the only videos I, I release. Obviously, that'd be stupid. Um, there are going to be a bunch of videos in between. Uh, but it is going to be a little, like, kind of mini-series almost, and uh, if you're interested, then uh, maybe stick around. But let's go ahead and just answer the question that we started off by asking. Um, does an annual release schedule affect the games in that franchise's quality? Does it affect the quality of the games in that franchise? And the answer is actually not as much as you would think. When a game releases doesn't matter that much. When development starts, does. If you set a deadline that you absolutely cannot break, then how far you're in the development of the game will determine whether you rush the game or not. Unlike most people, I actually don't have many problems with annual franchises. To me, what impacts a game's quality is whenever you set a super, super needlessly strict deadline for yourself, so you have to make a game that needs to come out at a specific time. Notice those quotation marks. Needs to come out at a specific time and just rushing it because the game is massive and you don't have time to fine tune everything. That, to me, is what impacts a game's quality, not release schedule. If you excuse me, I'm gonna go play Disney Infinity, and then go cry in the corner and eat a cold pizza. Thank you all for watching.